Hello all, welcome back to A Point in Life podcast where you are encouraged, inspired, and also challenged to live life God's way by applying his word. So today I just want to talk a little bit about running away from God's calling on your life. Now this is something that, you know, I often deal with and I'm sure that if I'm dealing with it, there's other believers that may be dealing with it as well. And I just want to talk about some things that may be causing it and I want to go ahead and just observe the passage uh, of Jeremiah chapter one, when God calls Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nation. So now when it comes to calling, when it comes to purpose, one of the most referenced texts is Jeremiah one verse five. And this is where God is speaking to Jeremiah, where he's telling him what he formed him to do. So it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Now, this is a beautiful text that captures the heart of God, not only towards Jeremiah, but to his children, those who are called by his name. Any of us who are called by his name has been created for his purpose, for his to do good works. When we look at Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says that we were created to do good works, that we are his workmanship. So each and every one of us, we have an assignment on our lives. We have a purpose. There is a call calling. There's things that God is calling us to do to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the earth. It's unique to each and every single individual. And one of the reasons why many of us run away from the call of God on our lives is because sometimes we're unsure what that would look like, or we're often trying to emulate how others are doing it. If he has called you to do it, he has called you to do it uniquely. Um, and it's something that we should want to embrace. Now, Like I said, although the word came to Jeremiah specifically as children of God who have been adopted and by the blood of Jesus Christ, we come to understand that God's purpose for us, God's purpose for you was established before you took your first breath. Yet sometimes that response to God revealing purpose or his plan is not always met with excitement, is not always met with the willingness to move forward in that direction. Sometimes you can you can ask your peers, those who are um, leaders, those who are, you know, that you would consider mentors, some of them, when they heard God's uh, uh, God's assignment for their life or the purpose that he had for them, it, it, I'm pretty sure you'll get that one answer that says, yeah, I didn't, at first I didn't embrace, I did not embrace that purpose or calling, but I came to embrace it uh, later on. So not only can we examine the scripture of Jeremiah 1 verse 5 or just Jeremiah chapter 1 in general, but we can also pull from our own lives, like myself, our own experiences where there is hesitancy, there is a fear that sometimes presents itself when it comes to accepting what God has purposed for you to do. Now, Jeremiah's response to God is something that we're familiar with. Um, Instead of Jeremiah embracing the call of God on his life, um, he began to highlight the inadequacies or elevate those things that he found to cause him to be insufficient or that he found to disqualify him to be a prophet to the nation. So he says in Jeremiah 1 verse 6, Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. Now, how many of us do this? How many of us take a look at certain characteristics that we may have or qualities that we may have and say, hey, this is what I have and I don't think that you can use it. This is what I have and I don't believe that what I have is going to bring you glory. Now, why do we do this? There are many factors that can contribute to that, depending on how you were raised. Now, as an adult, I'm able to see children that are being raised by parents that is that is um, instilling in them confidence, the ability that they, they have what it takes to do what they desire to do. And some of us may have not been raised in that type of environment where our natural parents, they did not instill that that self-sufficiency or that confidence to be able to do something that may seem impossible to other people. So when God calls us, we tend to pull from those experiences and say, uh, I don't I don't I don't think that I can do this because there was not a confidence that was 
foster in your ability to do. The thing is you have to be reminded that because he formed you, he knows exactly what you are capable of. See, he put you together. So of course he knows what you can and cannot do. So if that's the case, if you can follow this thought process, then it should be easy for you to understand or come to know that you were born with all that you need to do all that God has called you to be. Now, I believe what the devil does, especially as children, as we are growing up, is that he begins to plant seeds that are contrary to your makeup. He plants seeds, different seeds of words, different seeds of doubt that is contrary to uh, how God formed you. Now, how does he do this? He he does this by influencing those who are close to you, influencing those who are in proximity of you to highlight flaws. And if you are not aware that you were created in the image of God, that you were created a, a, for a purpose, and it's not being reinforced at home or by uh, another voice, you begin to believe the lie of the enemy and begin to receive it as truth for yourself. Now, this is why you often hear people that say, they, they'll say, go to the word of God and see what God says about you. Because someone can come, right? Someone can come and say to you that, oh, who do you think you are? You're, you're nothing special. But when you go to the word of God, you realize that it the word of God esteems you. It esteems who God has created you to be. It esteems what he has called you to do. And Psalms 139 verse 13 to 14, this is Psalm David. He wrote, he wrote, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Now, David could say this about himself because he was able to come to the reality. He was able to grasp that he was created by God. And if created by God, there was time taken to create. There was, uh, there was thought put in place. There was thought about you when God created you. He invested. He fearfully and wonderfully made you. So then why do we often shy away when God calls. See, the most common reason is fear of the unknown. Now, Jeremiah, although he stated two reasons to why he may not have been qualified for the calling that God had on his life, really it was being masked by the, by the fear that he felt. He stated that I cannot speak. He stated that he is too young when actuality he was just experiencing fear and, and did not express it to God. But God was able to pull that out. God being omniscient, he spoke to what he was actually feeling. In Jeremiah 1 verse 7, it says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. See, Jeremiah was citing things that was not a factor to God qualifying him for the assignment. And we often do the same thing, right? But Lord, I am this, I am that. And God is saying, release yourself from those I am statements of inadequacies and begin to identify yourself in the way that I have formed you. Begin to identify yourself with the words that I have spoken to you and in you. Not only does he tell Jeremiah to stop misidentifying himself, but he reassures him that he will be with him. There's no need to fear because I will rescue you. Jeremiah had to come to, to know that he was protected, that he was covered because he was sunk by God. Now, in the video that I made a while back about it's hard being a Christian, I mentioned that one of the reasons I believe it's hard being a, a Christian is because we are accountable to God and his word. Now, the thing is, if we believe that through the blood of Jesus Christ, he has rescued our soul from eternal damnation, then surely we can trust in his power to carry us where he is leading us in the here and now. Now, the challenge is running towards God instead of away from God. 
Now, one of the things that you can do to run it in the right direction is to voice your insecurities to God so that you are not holding on to something as, as if it's some, you know, big, dark secret that God cannot handle or address. God has the ability to heal you from fears. He has the ability to deliver you out of darkness. He has the ability to remove any chains in your life that would cause you to be bound. In Hebrews 12, verse 1, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so a great a cloud of witnesses. Now, this verse, when you read it in its entirety, it's talking about our salvation. It's talking about this race that we're running for us to endure, that we can look at our forefathers. They were able to endure. They were able to overcome. But when we talk, when, when we reference this scripture in light of purpose, in light of what God is calling you to do, Think about our forefathers in the faith that went before us. Their response, it was similar to Jeremiah, but at some point they answer the call. At some point they say, yes, Lord, lead me, I will go. And even those that we are alive with today, many of them, they were, they were given the same opportunity to say yes or no to a call. And many of them, we're able to see them, honor them, esteem them, but it was their yes that allowed them to be before your face. Many of you are wrestling, right? You're wrestling with the call of God on your life because you you may feel that you're comfortable. You're comfortable where you are. This is something that I deal with. I feel like I'm comfortable where I am. You know, God, I ain't got to go any further. But God wants more from you. He's calling more out of you because he has placed more in you. And you just have to believe that wherever he is taking you, he will be with you. And some of us, right? You, you know the beauty of the call, you know the beauty of the call, but what scares you is the challenges that also may come with that calling, that will also come with that purpose. But you have to position yourself in prayer and say, God, I see, I hear that this is where you want me to be. This is where you want me to go. But I ask, Lord, that you prepare me for the challenges that will come, that you instill in me the ability to overcome whatever that I face. And he will. What did he tell Jeremiah? He said, you're, you're protected. I will rescue you. So he will cover you. He will cover you. Trust me, I understand, you know, what that wrestling can feel like. I, I really do. But just like you, um, I have to trust God and I have to trust God no matter what. The luxuries, like think about the luxuries that we have. The fact that I'm able to record in front of a camera, the fact that we have cell phones, we we have lights. Just think about the different things that we have that just makes our lives a little bit more easier. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable. These things, it came from someone's yes and their will to act. You've been given a vision. Now, don't let your mind, because you know our minds sometimes play tricks on us. Don't let the enemy, you know, convince you that the vision needs to be discarded to convince you that you are not qualified for what God has called you to do. If God gave you the vision, just know the same God that called you is the same God that qualified you and he will be the same God that gives the increase. Now your responsibility is to continue to water what he has given you. Thanks for tuning in to Appointed Life Podcast and I pray that you have a blessed day.